it's Wendy Dewar Hughes from SummerBayStudio.com. Today I'm going to share with you how you can paint this beautiful watercolor maple leaf. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe below. Just click the button and click the little bell too so you can be notified of all the new videos as they come out. And be sure to stay till the end because I have a really nice surprise for you. So your first step in creating a painting is you need to do the drawing. And I've done the drawing for you. Here's the ver my version. It's in the lesson library on my website at wendydoerhues.com. All you have to do is sign in to get the secret password and you have access to everything in the lesson library. So you can download this and then you can just trace it onto your watercolor paper. And that's what I did. What you want to do is take your drawing and take your watercolor paper. I used 140 pound cold pressed watercolor paper. Paper clip them together and just hold it up to a window and trace it. Use a light pencil, very light pencil lines. You don't want those to show a lot. All right, let's get started with painting. This is the palette that I used. It's uh, paints that were in tubes and I just bought this little plastic palette. I also used a number four synthetic brush, which you might be able to see there, and uh, for the entire thing. So all you need is a number four brush. Your first step is to choose a yellow that you like, and I used Cadmium Yellow Dark and mixed it with quite a bit of water so that it wasn't terribly strong. And I painted the entire leaf. I just painted the body of the leaf. And once that's done, you have to wait for it to dry completely. Just paint the whole leaf, then let it dry completely. Go do something else, read for a while, go for a little walk. But it'll be dry. If you touched it with your fingertips, you want to feel that there's no coolness, which indicates that there's still dampness. Your next step is we're going to begin to put the, the color on top of the yellow. I used cadmium red light, alizarin crimson, almost exclusively. Sometimes I added a bit of yellow, but those three colors are all that you need for this. And when you begin, you want to start at the top and draw your brush down along the line in the center of the leaf to the first line on the right and then fill in that little triangle with your color. Now if you have a, a steady hand you don't really need to wait for that to dry. I recommend that you do at least several of the red patches on one side before moving on to the other side. So once you have that first little triangle done put the point of your brush about half a millimeter away from the line and take it right down to the center line and to the next line beneath it. What we're doing is covering up the pencil lines, but we want to leave the veins of the leaf yellow. So for each section where you see a line or where you've painted to a line, start like a half a millimeter away using the point of your brush, and a size four brush is excellent for this. Draw it down towards the center, right up against that center line, right up against the line below and then fill that space in with your color. What's really nice with this is you can vary your colors as you go along because all these little spaces are quite small. You can actually fill with one color and then drop in some of the cherry red so that there's some melting together of the colors. You can also make some more, more watery. I also left little spaces where the yellow showed through on each little section just to give it you know, kind of a little bit more crisp look to the whole leaf. For example, if you wanted to fill it with cadmium red or an orangey red, which whatever you have, and then put a more cherry red in it, some a little bit more intense, which means there's less water in the paint. Also, you can, uh, you can drop in some water when the paint is not quite dry, and that will make little watermarks in it, which is really a nice effect. Once you've gone part way down the leaf, what you'll want to do is make sure that the paint in any section doesn't have a dry edge within the body of it. You want to keep it wet, in other words, as you're working on it, and only let it dry once you've finished that patch. 
piece by piece, move up the lobe of the leaf on the right using the same method. Three sides will touch the pencil lines, the one on the outside of the leaf, the one in the center, and one of the veins. But when you start the next one, again, leave about a half a millimeter or sixteenth of an inch or less before you fill in the next one. Now, as you go along, vary the colors. You can fill it with the orangey red, add a little bit more water, add a little bit more paint, make it more intense, add some yellow, add some deeper red. Once that's completely dry as well, then we'll paint the shadows. And you can see the shadow lines. Be sure you didn't paint them as leaf lines. And what I used was a dark purple. Um, uh, ultramarine violet. I hardly mixed it with anything else except for along the bottom of the leaf I added a little bit of ivory black just to make it a little bit darker. What what adding the shadows does is make it look more alive which is kind of ironic for a, a leaf that isn't alive. However, paint all those shadows in going right up to the edge of the leaf. When you finish the ones around the leaf, do the stem you'll want to use the very tip of your brush to go down the stem and follow the pencil lines around the edges of the shadows. And you can see the stem shadow moves away from the actual stem, which gives the illusion that the stem has lifted. Now that you've seen the process I go through to create a piece of art, I thought you'd like to see what happens to it. I take this beautiful watercolor and turn it into a product or several products. Take a look. In my store, I have mugs, wall art, an apron, throw cushions, and as I promised at the start, you can have my beautiful maple leaf completely free. You'll find the link below. Don't forget to subscribe, and if you liked my video, click like. Leave a comment too, and I'll answer. Thanks for watching.